Joseph, I think, for a lot of people, is really the patron of the hidden life, the life that Jesus leads between ages 12 and 30. You know, St. Joseph has given no words to speak in the whole gospel. He's only given a few sentences, you know, where we, where we find out about Joseph's life, but, you know, he's not at the crucifixion. Uh, he's nowhere near to be found in uh, Jesus' ministry. We don't seem to see uh, much evidence of uh, Joseph. The only time we hear of him is that someone says something disparaging. You know, Jesus is on the scene and someone said, isn't this the carpenter's son? You know, why should we, we be listening to him? So clearly they knew Joseph. Joseph was pretty well known, but we know very little about Joseph. We can presume him to have uh, gotten married to Mary when Mary was maybe 14, 15, but Joseph may have been in his 20s or mid 20s. Uh, most pictures of Joseph show him as very old, but that's very unlikely. Joseph was probably a young man. And here's this person who's given this incredible burden and also this incredible gift of raising Jesus. And this is the kind of life that Joseph leads, very hidden. And if you think about it, that's 18 years of Jesus' life. And who are his primary teachers? Well, Mary, but also Joseph. Jesus is laboring alongside Joseph in the carpentry shop. And if you think about the kinds of things a carpenter would need to know, it's not too unreasonable to think that some of those talents would be the same things that Jesus would draw upon in his later ministry. So for example, a carpenter has to be patient in order to sand the wood and plane it the right way. A carpenter has to be honest in terms of dealing with other people. A carpenter has to be hardworking. So Joseph all along is teaching his son these values and these virtues that Jesus would end up using. He's also, as a Jewish father, teaching Jesus about his religious tradition. So it's not unreasonable to think that the very first person that Jesus would learn about his real father from, about God the Father, is his earthly father, Joseph. So Joseph, in the words of one Jesuit theologian, John Hoy, is helping to create the instrument most needed for the salvation of the world. At the time, in first century Palestine, uh, it says in the Gospel that Mary and Joseph were betrothed. Now, most of us think of that as engaged, and, you know, when Mary is presented as pregnant to Joseph, most of us would think, well, why didn't he just sort of break off the engagement? But at the time, betrothal was really almost like marriage. Uh, if you were pregnant or if you uh, did something uh, that required the uh, bond to be broken, uh, it was a real scandal. And technically, Joseph could have uh, exposed Mary to the law and had her stoned for being pregnant. But even before Jesus is born, Joseph's forgiving heart and his loving nature are on display. The Gospel tells us that uh, Joseph has a dream, and I believe that is one way that God has of communicating with us. Joseph is told in his dream to take Mary as your wife. And I have to think that some of that compassion and forgiveness would have obviously trickled down to Jesus as he spent uh, the rest of his uh, adolescence and adult life with uh, his father Joseph. But Joseph's life is so hidden that we don't know even when he dies. Um, but I really think that uh, Joseph is a model for all of us who try to lead these very good and holy lives, but lives that may not be seen by many other people, but they are seen by God. When I was in Kenya, I knew a lot of refugees uh, who led very difficult lives, trying to put food on the table, trying to just make ends meet that no one knew about, and yet who lived very holy lives. And I think that the secret to holiness is really trying to be, as the 
Dutch spiritual writer Henry Nouwen said, doing things that are hidden from other people but known by God. And isn't that the way it is in most of our lives? Most of the things we do are not gonna get on the front page of the newspaper. If you think of someone who is like a, a mother or father caring for an autistic child, or say uh, an adult child caring for their aged parent, or a person working two or three jobs to get their kids through school, these are very hidden things, and yet they're very holy because they're done out of love, they're done out of a sense of care for, for the family and for God. That's the kind of thing that Joseph does. Joseph does this wonderful thing for Jesus, raises Jesus, and we know nothing about him. And God obviously had a plan for Joseph. And I think what's so beautiful is that for people who think that what they're doing doesn't matter, I always say, think about Joseph. Think about this person who is raising uh, his son and doing something that's very simple, carpentry and raising a boy and yet whose life helped to change the life of the person who changed the world. St. Joseph, for so many people, is a rather distant figure. We know very little about him. But what St. Joseph tells us, I think, in our own lives is that even the small things you do, even the things you think are hidden and most unknown, can work for the salvation of the world. Joseph raised uh, his boy, Jesus, did very small things with Jesus, taught him how to pray, taught him how to have good manners, taught him to be a religious person. And these very small things added up to a very great person.